Ready to break free from algorithms, vanity PR, and money-sucking ads? My name's Larissa Worstiak, and I've learned in seven years of jewelry marketing that content is the crown jewel. My agency, Joy Joya, takes a holistic approach, leading with laser-focused storytelling, impactful content creation, and strategic content distribution. This method has worked for the solopreneur as well as the multi-million dollar company, and now I'm sharing the same systems and tactics with you. Here's to standing out in the sea of sparkle. In episode 261 today, our discussion will focus on the art of serving your customers and how that can actually be done through effective marketing. So often, jewelry business owners assume that their customers already know their preferences and shopping behaviors, but it's your role to act as the knowledgeable, instructive guide. So by leveraging innovative marketing strategies, you can really assist your customers more effectively, not only just meeting their needs, but in the process, also advancing toward your own business goals. So we'll be looking at this topic through the lens of Hillary Fink Jewelry, who we've been spotlighting as a jewelry brand brand case study. For those of you joining our podcast for the first time this season, I'd suggest going back to episode 252. That way you can meet Hillary and follow her journey until this episode. But before we dive into that chat with Hillary, I want to highlight the importance of service as a competitive edge. So I'll be exploring strategies for serving your customers that also align with your business objectives and discuss ways that you can showcase your dedication to service as a unique strength. But before we get to the solid gold, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both audio and video, so you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. You can support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I'd love to read about what you guys are learning from the podcast, what takeaways you all are having. So let me know. All right, let's get into today's episode, my sparklers. This one's all about being of service to your customers and how to do that through your marketing. So first, let's talk about the importance of service as a competitive edge. So for a jewelry brand, service should not just be a courtesy that you provide to your customers. Instead, I really, really want you to see the service you provide as a competitive edge. You already know the jewelry industry is saturated with a ton of choices from the super established brands to emerging designers and everything in between. And in this vast sea of options, when you are an independent brand and you're looking for ways to stand out and get like a leg up on the competition, your commitment to exceptional service is one thing that can really make you stand out. So that means personalized consults, attention to individual tastes, prompt responses to inquiries, post-purchase support. All of these things can transform a one-time customer into that loyal advocate. Furthermore, when you're in an industry where purchases are so often driven by emotion, meaning, and significance, when you create memorable service experiences that resonate deeply with your customers, then your brand becomes a trusted confidant for basically life's most precious moments. So while the sparkle of the gem might catch someone's eye initially, that ongoing shine of unparalleled service is what is going to keep them coming back for more. So what does service even mean? I think that we all have our own preconceived notions of customer service. And the way I'm going to talk about it today Maybe some of it matches your thoughts and some of it is just not what you think. For many people, I think customer service means like calling a 1-800 number or doing a live chat or even nowadays chatting with like an automated bot. This is not totally what I'm talking about, especially if you're a smaller brand and you can be more nimble and creative. I think there are more opportunities beyond that than just having like the customer service hotline. 
So let me share some ways that you can be of service through your marketing. The first thing I want to say, if you do offer promotions, they don't have to be discounts. We've talked about this in past episodes. Any sort of like promotion or incentive. If you're going to do those for your brand, I want you to prioritize the ones that enhance the shopping experience for your customer. And in that way, you don't have to appear overly salesy or commercial. So recently with Hillary, we did an ear party concept. So Hillary sells a lot of studs. We wanted to offer a promotion that Of course, the goal was to increase the average order value and to sell more products, but we were also really interested in providing the service to customers, especially those who have multiple piercings or want some more versatile looks in their jewelry wardrobe, that for this promotion, if you purchased a stud from one of her collections, then you could get 15% off another earring from a different collection. So the goal was to make it fun for the customer, again, help them build their wardrobe and just give them an enjoyable and rewarding shopping experience overall. So that's kind of what I mean by using marketing as a tool for service. Some other ways you can do this, please, 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 (laughs) Go back to the episode about merchandising in 257, and I think merchandising very much goes hand in hand with service because merchandising can be a tool to help your customers easily find and easily purchase the things that they want. If the shopping experience is challenging, frustrating, difficult, like looking for a needle in a haystack, that is really poor service. So you really want to think about the merchandising marketing connection. And to that end, especially if you have a Shopify store, this might not be as much of a concern because most Shopify themes are well optimized for mobile, but so many people shop on mobile now. So make sure that you are thinking about service in the lens of, I want this shopping experience to be easy and fun, even on a small screen. Some other ideas would be to develop interactive tools, so like style quizzes or product configurators, and this goes back to the episode about custom, to help your customers to service them in choosing the product that is the right, most right for them. So like if you were a skincare brand, for example, this would look like a skin type quiz to help shoppers find the right products for their needs. So as a jewelry brand, maybe this is like a color personality thing or like a metal type, or this could very much apply to like engagement ring shoppers. Again, make it fun and easy for people to shop. Another way you can be of service in your marketing is to respond to all comments on your Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're posting, and closely monitor your DMs so that if people do reach out to you, they're not waiting days for an answer from you because they may get lost in like message requests. And how frustrating is it as a customer to feel like you cannot contact the business if you have a question? Also, content can promote service. So create blog posts, videos, Ebooks explaining your jewelry, the, the behind the scenes, how it's made, how to style. This is a way to provide value and service to your customers, and it helps your customers make informed and confident purchase decisions. You can consider implementing a loyalty program. So this is an awesome way to provide service. Reward your loyal customers with exclusive deals, early access, special content. This makes people feel taken care of and paid attention to. I would say also, regardless of the size of your business, it's essential to designate a section on your website or online shop for your customer service policies and then put those policies into practice. I think many small businesses neglect this. They think it's 
since they don't have like a dedicated customer service team, they don't think to like write out their policies and make them super clear. But on the flip side, your customer doesn't necessarily know how big or small you are and the policies related to shipping, returns, sizing, repairs, whatever, whatever, that can help foster trust and make you seem more legitimate as a business. And also beyond the purchase, service means engaging with your customers. So celebrating their special occasions like their birthdays, their anniversaries, celebrating them for their purchase. As again, I talked about in previous episodes, this not only delights your customers, but will also strengthen brand loyalty. So if you're a brand that's committed to service, how do you let your customers know that this is important to you? I have two ideas. First of all, share behind the scenes content on your website or social media platforms that spotlight your dedication to service. So this could include short video testimonials from your satisfied customers, a photo series showcasing the process of accommodating a special request or like a custom project, stories about how your team or other people you work with, suppliers, how you all go the extra mile for your customers. You can pair these stories with captions or narratives that underline your brand values centered on exceptional service. Second, you can introduce a clear and prominently displayed service guarantee on your website or in your store. So if you have a promise that you'll respond in a certain amount of time, that can be like a badge. Or if you have a lifetime repair guarantee, that could be like a badge. If you offer a custom design consultation, put that front and center. I think that these like call out trust factors can really make a difference in that service aspect in your business. And it it all connects to marketing and storytelling as well. So coming up in this chat with Hillary, we're going to explore how me and my team are assisting her in her being able to better serve her customers with distinctive promotions and more regular marketing efforts focused on being of service to these people who truly collect her products. Hi, Hillary. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Larissa. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. So when we're recording this, we are teasing to your email subscribers a new drop of stud earrings. And I would love to hear from you what is special about this drop and why do you think your collectors will be excited about seeing it? Um, Well, at least once a year, I put out a studs collection. Uh, I just think it's fun to have like this be a group of of pieces together uh, as one type of collection. I like it as a category in itself just because even if people wear more statement type earrings, I think everyone loves studs. You know, you don't, I think just some days you want to leave the house, just something simple on. So um, I think it's just a nice jewelry category to have. Um, And then I have a couple new pieces I'm excited about. The, um, the turquoise bead earrings, they're made with a string of vintage Persian turquoise beads that I got in Tucson. So I have a limited supply of those. And then the, um, the square coin pearl studs. Um, I'm excited about those just because they're pretty big. They're kind of like having like a button on your earring. I think you had said that's kind of what it reminded you of. Lurs. That's a great description. So there, like, if there ever was like a statement stud, I think that the pearls are, are kind of in that category. Yeah, those pearls were neat. They, they kind of seem vintage inspired like more like 50s like clip on mm-hmm. earrings or something so yeah i hope i hope they sell for sure <laughs> yeah me too so during one of the meetings we had when we were talking about this we i brainstormed a promo to try cuz i'm like hillary needs to sell more <laughs> she needs she needs to boost her average order value so but we also don't want to do promos that like, quote unquote, cheapen your brand or your product. So let, instead, let's encourage people to order more to build out their jewelry wardrobe. So this particular promo is going to be if someone buys one of these new studs, then they can add on 
a stud from your hand hammered, more like essential metal collection for 15% off. So an incentive Mm -hmm. to get people to order more. What was your initial reaction to trying something new like this? Well, initially I was like, oh, I don't know, because we just had a, I just had a sale for my, you know, business anniversary and my personal birthday. And so I thought, "Ah, I don't know if we should do another sale, but then it kind of grew on me the more that we talked about it, how, you know, the whole purpose is to like kind of celebrate studs and celebrate being able to like build your quote unquote ear party or stud party if you have multiple piercings so it, it really grew on me. And I think it is a nice way for people to, that may not, you know, explore through my website much. I think it's a great way for people to see that there are these smaller options and just kind of these more everyday options that they could, they could have. Yeah. And it makes it feel like sales is more of a service that you're mm-hmm. kind of like what you're saying, helping people build out their wardrobe, especially if you have multiple piercings, like it's nice to have different options to mix things up. So we're helping the customer. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's the way things need to be framed for me because I, you know, I'm always going to be toward the, you know, me, I'm just like, Oh, I don't want to bother anyone. You know, I'm not a very good salesperson necessarily. So um, I thought it was a great idea. I'm, I'm happy to try it. Yeah. Do you, how do you think that your customers will respond? Or are you not really sure at this point? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I know that there's people that are excited about some of the studs that are dropping, but I know that they're definitely not expecting what we're about to do. So I, I'm just really curious to see how people respond to it. Mm-hmm, definitely. And also, um, we we started talking through ways of presenting that. So like another thing we're going to try with Hillary is using a Shopify app. I think it's called sell up or something that makes it super easy for someone to add that additional product to cart without having to like dig too much in the website to figure out, well, what exactly can I buy? Mm-hmm. That's a great app. It's a really, really good idea. Um, So again, yeah, it's just kind of a nice way, like you were just saying, to just show what else might be available and show that there's a little discount going on. Um, And it's not a very like obtrusive looking display or anything. It's, it's, It's very nice looking too. So yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Excited to see what happens with that. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Experimentation is good. Yeah, absolutely. So we've also been talking about the holidays a lot. It's like mid-September when we're recording this, but we're already talking through like Black Friday and promotions leading up to Black Friday. Um, And you also have your only in-person event that you're going to be doing before the holidays Mm -hmm. too. So knowing from your past experience that you're very busy for this event, we kind of started to brainstorm ways to position that in addition to the launch of your holiday pieces. So how are you kind of feeling about how it's all rolling out? Um, Well, there's a lot that's going to be happening for the rest of the year. And so thank goodness for the content calendar and thank goodness for your team because it just helps keep it all straight. That's for sure. Um, I'm just going to be really busy. And I think that's just generally how it goes this time of year. I have let's see another collection drop in October, November and December, um, which might sound crazy, but I love making jewelry and I love having new pieces for people to look at. Um, and then I have, you know, my stores that are asking for holiday orders. So I think I figured out that I have about 60 new pieces to make in about 60 days. You know, well, no problem. No problem yeah. at all. We'll see how this goes. I'll be doing yoga, um, which is really going to help a lot. And, uh, it'll be fine. It's it's just, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, thank goodness for the content calendar, though, because it really helps you see just, you know, where things are in terms of the spacing between the drops and where to put the sales. I don't know. I never know where to put the sale. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. And not to your point, not only see internally, but like, what are the dates that are just happening in the world? Like, you know, Veterans Day in November, when is Black Friday? Like, when is all this stuff happening? And so it's mm-hmm. good to look at that in the context of everything else. Mm-hmm. Definitely. 
we did run by the idea of doing a virtual event to correspond with your open studio, but I know it's just a lot given that you have to make the 60 products and be at the actual event. But I think we came up with some alternative ideas just in terms of timing and making sure that people who can't come still feel like they are taken care of and they are still getting, you know, communications and product updates from you. I would love to do a live event sometime. I wish I was more, um, uh, I wish I felt more natural and like for a live Instagram type of a sale there. Are, I feel like there are a lot to organize and put on and especially at a time like this when it's so busy. So I'm not sure if I'll do it. I most likely won't do it. Um, but I think it would be nice to have some, I know in the past when I've promoted my open studios, people that don't live in the Bay area have, they have gotten in touch with me and said, Hey, I'd love to see what you, what kind of samples you have. And so it is a really good idea. Um, we'll, we'll just see what happens. There's a certain amount of like marketing and um, you know, sales that I just do on the fly, unfortunately. So um, we'll see how it goes. Also, just thinking on the fly, maybe after the studio event, you can open up to like appointments or something with things that are left over just to give Hmm. those people like that one-on-one time with you. But we can (laughs) can talk about that more too. Because again, I know it's a lot. Yeah, I also think that's a great idea. I do a lot of emailing and a lot of DMing and even texting with some of my clients. Um, but what I generally don't do a lot of is is phone calls or video chats. And I know, especially with jewelry, it's really important to see it on. And it's not always possible for me to get model shots of my jewelry since I tend to put out collections so frequently. Mm-hmm. So. I think my clients would really love that. And I think it would be, it's a great way to get to know my clients a little bit better too. It'd be fun. Yeah. And the relationship is so key. I feel like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, So now that we're talking about holiday, what are you most excited about and what are some goals that you have? I am super excited about the stones I've uh, chosen for the rest of the year. Um, It'll be, you know, kind of similar color scheme for October, another different color scheme for November, and then a special pop of stones for December um, that I'm really excited about. I mean, that's just kind of the fun of having gemstones in your collection is just being able to lay them all out and go through them and, you know, put them together, see what'll look nice together. So I'm really excited about that. And I just, I just like to see what people gravitate to. You know, I let, I like this time of year where people are excited to shop. They're excited to buy special pieces for their friends, for their family, for their loved ones. So, and it's just, and then once it's all over, it's like, oh, okay. You know, you get like two weeks to take off and regroup. And it's like this time of year just goes by so fast. It's so true. And that just made me remember too, you were talking about being excited about seeing what people buy. We had just talked about earlier today with the studs one of your customers noticed in your preview that you had silver and she was really excited about that. So it's good for us to like hear that feedback from people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's why I continue to have more affordable pieces in my collections, just because I don't want to ever, I don't want to leave people out. And I love working in silver. I wear, I wear a lot of silver myself. So it's not like I have a thing against silver. It's just I feel like once you start working in gold, it's really hard to kind of not just because it is just such a lovely and beautiful material to work with. And it looks so gorgeous with gemstones. Um, But yeah, I love getting feedback like that from my clients. It's really important that I try to not make everyone happy because you can't, right? But um, just keep those really important long-term clients happy. Well, thanks, Hillary. It was great chatting today. You too. Thanks, Larissa. What did you think about the interview? Are you excited to keep following Hillary on this journey? I highly encourage you to check out Hillary's website, hillaryfink.com, and follow her on Instagram at hillaryfinkjewelry. And I'll put those links in the show notes as well. Let me know in a podcast review or YouTube comment what you think. All right, let's get into the gold mine. This is a segment where I get personal and share insights on entrepreneurship, mindset, success, growth, all things business, things 
close to my heart. This week's gold mine gives me a chance to unpack the topic of change for the sake of change. I can't claim that I came up with this idea. It was actually sparked by something I saw on the Marketoonist marketing blog, which is a cartoon a satire blog for marketers. Very nerdy, I know, but I'll put the link in the show notes if you do want to see it. There was a particular line from this one blog post that jumped out at me that marketers are the first to get bored by their own marketing. This is insight really struck a chord with me. And I think it especially can apply to solopreneur jewelry business owners like many of you, my sparklers. You're not just the ones crafting jewelry, but you're also crafting the brand message. You're out there being the marketers. So can you relate to the sentence, marketers are the first to get bored by their own marketing? This is a common pitfall. I see it a lot. I have to talk people out of this very often. When you're feeling restless or unsatisfied with the progress of your business, with the response from your customers, I think the first instinct is to want to completely overhaul the marketing. Just blow it all up, throw it out, let's start over. There's this sudden desire to reinvent the wheel. You want to maybe adopt a new brand voice. You want to shift the visual themes in the emails. You generally just want to shuffle everything up. And the thought process behind that is, well, if it's boring to us, surely our customers must be yawning too. But I urge you to resist that impulse. Please don't rush into change, especially not on a whim and very especially not just because you are bored. If you're going to make a change or a shift, it should really be grounded in concrete data and strategic analysis. If you're constantly flipping your messaging or aesthetics several times a year because you're bored, well, I can pretty much guarantee that those changes are not deliberate methodical, and anchored in purpose. So there's definitely this misconception, I think in marketing in general, that messages, the stories we tell, can become worn out or stale. And literally in the industry, it's called wear out. (laughs) Okay. But there's research that challenges this idea that storytelling can get worn out. And actually, the data says that wear out may not be an issue with consumers at all. It's only marketers that grow tired of their communications. So wear out is their problem, not that of the market. And then building on this, this post that I read It introduces this alternative approach that maybe we should think about, the concept of where in, which is more about leaning into familiarity, building trust, letting your customers settle into a consistent and dependable relationship with your brand. And I don't think enough people out there are doing that. So what else are you supposed to do when you're feeling frustrated and you just think your marketing's to blame? When you feel that itch of frustration and you're tempted to blow things up, it's really important to take a moment to reflect. So instead of just overhauling everything, get some feedback first, engage with your loyal customers, maybe through surveys, maybe through one-on-one interactions, find out how they perceive your brand and what they need. You can collaborate with your peers, get a mentor, hire a marketing consultant. These approaches can provide fresh perspectives and help you see that if you want to blow things up, you're probably on the verge of making a rash decision and that there are risks that come with impulsive changes, especially when they are frequently happening. So evolution is really important in business, but it should be a journey of informed steps rather than leaping into the unknown. What do you think about that? 
let me know in an Instagram DM podcast review or YouTube comment. Did you have any questions about today's episode? You can always email me Larissa. That's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com. If you love this podcast, please share it with a friend who'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're completely new to digital marketing, then you'll want to purchase and read a copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy. Visit joyjoya.com slash book for more information.